I want to talk about the ultimate cure for cataracts. Cataracts are the leading cause of blindness. The main treatment for it is surgery. So if there's things that we can do to prevent it, and even if we get it, possibly reverse it, uh, we need to know about this. First, I want to just share what is a cataract. It's a cloudiness, opaqueness of the lens of the eye, okay? And apparently what causes it is too much oxidative stress. Now, what does oxidative stress mean? Think about oxidation as kind of rusting out something. I was raised in Wisconsin. We have a lot of salt and we have a lot of rain and we have snow and our cars are rusted out. So when you think about oxidation, think about rusting. We have a lot of oxidation and not enough antioxidants, okay? So that's a protective thing against this oxidation. So if we have this situation going on in the eye, chances are you're more likely to get a cataract. So where does this oxidation come from? It comes mainly from sugar, right? If you have high levels of sugar in your blood, there are four main tissues that are affected, kidney, nerves, arteries, and the eye. So in other words, this high sugar in your blood ends up with high sugar in your eye. And about one third of it converts to something called sorbitol. And sorbitol tends to accumulate in the lens of the eye. Sorbitol is a sugar alcohol, and it's not a good thing if it ends up in the lens of the eye because when it accumulates, it creates inflammation. It creates what's called glycation. So just think of it like the, the proteins are binding to the sugar, like glue in your lens, and that creates the cloudiness. Now, what I didn't know about the lens, which I just learned about, which is actually quite fascinating, early on when we were very young, the lens of our eye does have certain things in it like mitochondria. But as we get older, they tend to go away. And so the oxygen and the nutrients in the lens comes from the fluid in the eye. But the front part of the eye, okay, it's called the anterior part, has a single layer of cells that do have mitochondria, which means this, they're very susceptible to having damage if there's high levels of sugar. And when the mitochondria, the energy factors of the cell get damaged, they can really put out a lot of um, oxidation, which creates free radicals, which create an instability. It creates inflammation in the lens and it's creating a situation where it's gonna become very opaque. Now the sorbitol doesn't just end up in the lens. It also ends up in the retina of the eye. It also ends up in the cells that make myelin in your nerves. And it also pulls in a lot of fluid into the eye, increasing pressure as in glaucoma. So when people get cataracts, a lot of times they also have glaucoma. They also have like macular degeneration. Uh, they have all sorts of issues. So right off the bat, if you're starting to get cataracts, you need to change your diet and you need to get rid of sugar immediately. But now I wanna talk about how to undo this process, right? If you have it. And uh, let's take a look at a couple things first. I wanna just kind of tell you what this word carnosine means. Let me move my head. Carnosine, what is carnosine? Carnosine comes from the word carn, which means flesh, which actually implies meat. And the carnosine molecule actually works within the mitochondria. And that's what's very interesting because L-carnosine in the mitochondria act as a pH buffer, okay? So if something's more acid for various reasons, it can help buffer the pH because that acidity can create damage. Also, L-carnosine works as a very powerful antioxidant. Remember over here, we want more antioxidants. It also gives a anti-glycation effect. That glycation is like glue that kind of keeps the protein and the sugar together and makes them unusable. So carnosine is anti-glycation. It's also anti-aging. So this molecule is very good for preventing and the reversal of cataracts. But the problem is it can't really penetrate the eye. So that's why you have to add something called N-acetyl to this carnosine compound because this N-acetyl part allows it to penetrate, to go right through the eye with drops and deliver this antioxidant, anti-glycation type thing. There's something to actually reduce the acidity going on because of the high level of sugar. So this is really important in kind of repairing also the mitochondria, which came from eating too much sugar usually. I found some interesting research, and I'm gonna put it down below. Uh, one paper uh, involved 50,000 people with significant results. 
not with just with cataract, but with also glaucoma and macular degeneration. Another research paper talked about a reversal after five months with a 1% solution. But then when you go on uh, Amazon to try to find a product like this, you can't really find it. All you see is NAC for pets like dogs or horses. So there's a lot of products used for dogs or horses that are getting uh, cataracts, but why not humans? That's really interesting. So you're going to have to get this off of Amazon and search for a good product that has good reviews. Make sure it's the N-acetylcarnosine. And you want to take one to two drops of this in each eye two to three times per day. Now, I'd also recommend taking some zinc, okay? Because zinc is also something that can help prevent cataracts. It's a powerful antioxidant, plus NAC depends on it. You need enough zinc for it to exist in the body. So zinc and NAC is going to be what I recommend. Of course, the zinc won't be used topically on the eye. You take it orally. Now, you may see results uh, pretty quick, depending on how severe it is, but it could take weeks to months before it completely goes away. However, I'm going to mention that there's a limitation of matter, and of course, it may not work for you. But it's pretty safe, and the investment that it would cost to buy some is pretty low. And potentially, if you could do something that was pretty safe, that could reverse this without surgery, it's definitely an option. So anyway, I put some links down below to talk about some of the research that I just mentioned. And if you have not visited drberg.com to sign up for my newsletter to get some unfiltered content that you're not going to find on YouTube, I put a link down below. Check it out.